All right. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Um, so you, sh so everyone who's not live tonight, um, you've got your base plan printed out at eight and a half by eleven, and you you want to kind of mount that up kind of high in your working area, and then put your piece of sketch paper over the top. So kind of make it level if you have a parallel bar or a T-bar. Um, I happen to have a little drawing grid right here that's going to help me um, tonight because I don't have my rolling glider. I accidentally took it to my office. Um, but you're going to want to try and have a, a straight edge that's parallel. So sometimes if I have like a T-bar, what I'll do is set the T-bar on the edge of my table and I'll set the paper kind of right on top of that T-bar to get the, the horizontal lines in the paper um, related directly to that T-bar or parallel bar or gliding roller. And you, you can take this down kind of high in the area you have to draw and then lay the piece of, of uh, tissue paper over it, but the tissue paper should end up lower. I'm not giving myself a whole lot of room to work and that's because I need to keep everything in the camera frame for you guys. I would probably ideally have a little bit more space between my plan and where I'm going to draw my section. So if we look at this plan before we start drawing anything, you can see it's a space of this little kind of residential or multifamily plaza. It's got a little bench seat, a small planter wall behind it. There's stairs coming down, and I know they're coming down because there's an arrow, and the arrow always points down direction. So these steps are six inches high. Um, I've got a six foot high wall that runs along this perimeter. And then I see a couple steps, actually three steps, and I can tell because each of them has a dot on top of this line that ends in an arrow. So I have three risers that go down to this little bridge that crosses the water. And then it joins a little walkway on the other side of this stream. So what we're doing tonight, we've focused a lot on, on drawing and plan view. We're now going to cut a section through this and tilt this landscape up and draw first in section. So in section means everything that falls on this cut line that says from A to A, right? It has these this kind of line that goes through it. That's where the design is cut. And we're almost going to tilt that on its side so we could see what that space looks like. And sections and section elevations um, work best to show the difference in elevation between different spaces. That's where they come in the most handy, to understand how the grades change between different places in our design. So when we say on section, it's on this cut line. In elevation means we're also going to show the trees and the other items like this wall and this bench that, that happen beyond this cut line. So you can see the direction of the arrows. We're going to pick up all these trees and, and items, landscape features that are behind that cut line. Okay, so we know that we're in, this is to scale. And if I look at this kind of an unusual way to draw a scale, but we have one inch is equal to four feet. And you could take your scale at a quarter inch scale and verify that. Now, it might be slightly off depending if um, there's, there's settings when you go to print these out that say shrink to fit or print actual size. If you, if you selected print actual size, this scale should be right on the money. If you went to the default setting of scale to fit, it'll be just a hair off, not a little bit. It tends to shrink it down a little bit. So, you know, that's one thing to check if you're, if you're working in drawings and you've spent a lot of time drafting something in scale, then try to make sure you print it out in scale too. But this should be at a quarter scale or about a quarter scale. Normally, we would have a, a little clear indication of that where we would see something like scale um, is one quarter of an inch 
is equal to one feet zero inches because we're in architectural. But they gave us a graphic scale. It's always nice to have a written scale and a graphic scale together. Oh, and you can't see that because it's not focused. Let's try that. That's a little bit better. Now that I have some line work on the paper, it knows what to focus on. So graphic scale and written scale. Nice to have both on your on your drawing. Okay. So then I'm going to create a series of scaled lines that's going to create a grid down below. This is going to make it so that I don't have to measure every single thing, how tall it is, to draw. So I know the limits of my paper from here to here. So my grid can kind of stay in that general area too. And what I'm going to do is below the paper, again, hopefully you guys have a little bit more working area than I do, but I need to stay within the, the camera frame. So I'm going to start drawing my grid right at the bottom of this. And I'm going to maybe mark about 10, um, 10 quarter inches or 10 feet to kind of draw in my grid. So I'm just taking my scale and I am um, measuring, counting off the different feet up to 10. There. And I really wish I had my rolling glider, but I don't. So I'm gonna, luckily I have a grid behind my paper, so I can have somewhat of a straight line, but you should be using whatever parallel edge you have. And I'm gonna create this grid by simply um, creating lines along those edges, hopefully parallel lines. Okay. If you can kind of see that. Now, a lot of times we'll set up these grids just for our first pass through. Um, we might set these, have move these onto a separate sheet, and then put an overlay on it. You don't have to have a, a separate overlay for this assignment. The first time you're going through this, but no one in office. Sometimes we'll set up a grid, and then we will um, we will draw layers of tish the the design actually on layers of tish over the top of it, so that we can just keep layering and refining how the graphics look. You can see I have about 10 different grids. All of these are about a quarter of an inch apart. I'm going to keep those in pencil. Those are really a guideline. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, maybe about, about fourth line up or so, I'm going to call that zero foot elevation. I'm going to say minus one, minus two, minus three, and then above zero is one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. So just kind of pinpointing which elevation I'm at. And I can see that, you know, I'm not really given spot elevations on this. If I were working with an actual survey, it might give me a spot elevation. It might say that this plaza is 327. So that would be my middle line. And then, then part of the design goes up up these stairs and part of it goes down these stairs over here. So I know I'm gonna kind of pick a middle elevation and make a few go up and a few go down for this for this particular um, thing. Um, but sometimes we see elevation in feet above sea level. But in this case, we're not giving a starting elevation. So we're gonna assume that our plaza is zero elevation. And you can hear my neighbors taking their trash out. Isn't that great? <laughs> so when we work in elevation, one of the first things we're doing is we're bring, we're focusing on this cut line right here, right? See that on our plan, right? That's our section cut line. It's kind of clearly labeled on this one. So I want to focus first on what this line cuts through. 
And I can use, because I'm drawing a section in the same scale as this plan, I can simply just pull the lines down from the plan above, which is a nice feature. Um, if I was drawing in an, another section, I might have the plan to the side and have to measure each of these and then translate that measurement down here. But for now, I know I'm on the zero line. And now I'm going to kind of pull down a line and back. I'm just going to kind of run my um, triangle across. And I'm just going to kind of rough, kind of make guidelines of these of these different lines. So I see the outside of the wall, inside of the wall. I'm going across the section. I'm really just focused on hardscape right now. Now I can see where this. Um, oh, actually, I see this patio cover, the edge of that. So I'm just again going to bring a quick guideline down for that item. I'm not worrying about where it hits here. I'm just kind of bringing that information down. Here's the outside edge of that overhead. The other side, I'm gonna bring that down. I'm actually gonna bring down the center line. Uh, well, no, I'll worry about that later because that's we're focusing on the section line. Then about six inches past the edge of the overhead, you can see that the first step down occurs. So you'll see that little dot on the arrow, down arrow going down the steps. So that's the edge of my patio and the first riser of the steps. I'm gonna bring that line down. Again, these are rough guidelines. Just trying to translate the information from up, up above down into the section below. This is my second riser. My third riser right here. And I've got this little bridge. So the third riser comes down to the bridge and then the bridge ends over on this side. I'm gonna bring that information over. Again, I'm just focusing on that cut line right now. I've got this walkway. I'm gonna bring that line down also. Um, underneath this bridge, I actually have the edge of the bank. I'm going to bring that line down too. So you can see, you know, first I'm kind of going through this, but this cut line also comes right at the edge of this bank, rocky bank. So that's what I'm bringing down on each side of the design. And I'm really just trying to, you know, figure out where it's going to cut that section line. So I end up with all these little lines brought down onto my paper. And those are going to drive um, getting how this elevation changes through this design. So are you following along or do you want me to just run through it and you're going to watch the video? Oh, I think you're muted. Uh-oh. No, yeah, I am following along. I'm okay. Like trying, I, I will play through this again because I'm trying to understand. I can't just like do and yes. as you talk. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's I, I didn't want to like zoom through the whole thing. So um I guess if there's anything in there that's unclear, um I, I mean it's a good good time. Like if you have questions, I know anybody else who from your classmates that watches this will have questions. Yeah. So again we're just kind of using that section line as a guide and really coming through and marking every end. So the, the inner and the outer edge of the wall, we've got the outside of the overhead structure. And this is a typical symbol for an overhead structure, this dotted line. And then we're gonna catch the other side of the overhead structure and the first riser or the edge of the patio, second riser of the stairs going down, third riser going down, edge of the bridge, edge of the bridge, we brought down, edge of the walkway. And then we kind of came back and realized this bridge goes over this bank. So there's kind of a couple layers. We have the edge of the bridge and the edge of the bank. Edge of the bridge, edge of the bank. So those are the different lines that I've, that I've carried down onto this grid down below. So from that, I can start to, um, 
kind of set the elevation. So the first piece, I've got to call out this is that this wall is six feet high. So I know it's starting at the zero layer and it's six feet. So I know the top of the wall is going to be about there. And I'm going to use a drafted edge and hopefully you guys have better set up for your parallel bars. Bringing that right down to the zero line on my grid. Right, so there's my wall. My plaza comes nice and level all the way over at zero elevation. I'm going to go all the way to this edge. So I've got the edge of the overhead, but then also the plaza. Right. I'm not going to worry about the overhead for the moment. Each riser is six inches deep. So I know this is my first riser, and I know I've got a grid that is set up for one, one foot. So I know my riser is going to come down half of that grid. All out of alignment. Take that down. Rock it around. Okay, good idea to have the top layer taped down. Not like I just did. You can see I got that first top of the riser. It comes down half a foot or half of the length of one of these grids, and then it comes over for the step to the next, to the next line. That one comes down six inches again, over to the next one. If you have old eyes, magnifying readers work really well for this kind of work. Now I'm going to come down. I have my third riser, right? One, two, three. So here's the last top of the riser. One, two, three. So this one's going to come down half a foot again. And then I come over onto this bridge. So I'm going to worry about the edges of the bridge first. That. And I'm just kind of roughing everything in. And then I'll come back and put more detail on them. And then this bridge is flush with this walkway. You carry that line over. Again, you should be using a parallel bar, glider bar. And then we've got a two to one slope up here. So what that means for every one foot in elevation, it, it, uh, it, it goes over two feet. I can kind of mark that and plot that out. And you can see that's two to one is labeled up in here. Okay, so I could go over two feet and just mark it. And then say, okay, now I'm going to go one, up one foot. So halfway between these next, I'm midway between these grids. And I'm going to go up between the next set of grid lines over. And I can just rough that grade in, that slope in. Something like that. All right, so this is a two to one slope. That means for every two feet over, it rises one foot. So I got that. Okay, so. Now, it doesn't give me what the elevation is over here behind this wall. I just see there's some little shrubs. So I could make this either low, and this is a big privacy wall, or I could make this a little retaining wall. It's up to me. It's some, some choice in there. I'm going to make it a little retaining wall because I just think that's good. I know that we're dropping down in grade behind. So maybe I'll make it lower. And usually when we have soil behind a wall, there's a, there's an area called a bench like that that 
that is flat. So the wall doesn't slope directly into it. It has a little flat area and there's usually drainage in that area to keep, keep water from pushing that wall over. And I'm just gonna darken, normally in section elevation, this is the line where the earth is, is usually your darkest line. So it reads very bold. There's two ways to do this. I'm gonna use the outside edge of the wall, but some people actually come around the wall in the footing down below. It doesn't, it, it's a more of a personal preference thing on that one. So I'm just going over the lines I already drew, drew with my thick Sharpie marker to make a more bold articulation of this part of the plaza area. Now when I get under the bridge, there's also that lower bank. So if I look at the notes on the bridge, I see that the water level is two feet below the level of the bridge. So I can measure that. This is gonna be really tight for me. So there's about two feet down below the bridge. And I also have those lines where the edge of the bank came in with the boulders. So it might actually look something like this. Right. Same with over here. There's these kind of boulders defining the edge of the bank. That's because the bridge floats up above the actual earth grade. So I might have something like that. Check it down. Touch my bottom. My this part. Like and so you start to know that how that grade starts to really change throughout this section. And that is the strength in using sections for graphics. It's really in illustrating how the grade might change. So I also wanna float my little overhead structure. It doesn't give me a height to that, does it? Oh, it says eight feet. So um, it is eight feet off the ground. So here's my zero, we went up to seven, so I've actually gonna make it slightly larger. And add another foot hook to it. And I can see my edges go from here, where I brought the line down in the middle of the plaza, to this side over here, right before my steps start to go down the risers. I'll give this a thickness. Maybe it's a four, four inch beam. And right now I'm just have it kind of floating in space because we haven't hit elevation to get the columns to it yet. But there would be like kind of the top of my overhead on that space. So Carla, do you, do you want to do you need a few minutes to kind of catch up or do you want to watch this and then redo the video? I know usually like people have a hard time catching up with me. No, I'll, I'm going to rewatch the video. I don't want to slow it down. Um, yeah, okay. cause I need, 
I need a second to absorb everything that you're doing and then actually just try to do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I know in class, we normally take breaks at like different points. So Troy, welcome. Um, same with you. We're, we're, we're starting by kind of setting up the plan view in a working area up high, creating a grid um, at a quarter scale, which is what this plan is at down below. And we've just gone through cutting through the section line, um, which is the actual cut line through this space of this little plaza. There's stairs that are coming down. We know that because there's an arrow pointing down and little dots on each riser. And then another set of stairs down here to this bridge, which crosses this little stream across to a walkway. So we're just kind of looking at how these elevations change through this space. Okay, so the, the first pass, I usually set it up to pick up the hardscape and the hard elements on the section line. If I had any planting, then I would go back and I would, would pull up any places where this section line cut through the center of plants. So it cuts through the edge of this tree, but this tree is really beyond the section line. We call that in elevation. Same with this plant material. So I don't really have that second pass on the cut line. And when I'm doing these in the office, I normally will, will take hardscape elements and do the grid lines down in red. And then I'll take the plant material and pull the grid lines down in green. But this is a pretty simple space. And if I use red and green, you will never see it on the camera. So anyway, so that's how we kind of came up with this articulation. And now we can really see how that grade changes through this cut line. So the next step then is to look at everything that falls behind the cut line. And we can see the direction we have to look because of these arrows and start picking up on these elements like these stairs, this planter wall, the trees and the shrubs, this little bench. We've got this tree over here. Those are the things that are shown in elevation. Also the columns on the pergola, that's where they're falling behind that cut line. So we wait to pick those up in elevation. So That's I'm going to do that. Thing. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yes. You said it's a quarter inch That's scale? Okay. Yeah, we're at a quarter inch scale. Okay. It's a little tricky because the the guy who wrote the book only gave you a graphic scale. But That's if you okay. were to take your architectural scale and actually measure it um, at the quarter inch scale, you would see one inch is equal to not quarter inch scale. Um, one inch is equal to four feet, right? So it's quarter inch scale. So I went ahead and threw a written scale in here, just for clarity. A lot of the times when we're doing plans, it's important to include a written and a graphic scale. The written, because that's the easiest for us to read and understand. Graphic, because if, if you scan this and send it off to a contractor and maybe you've drawn it at 11 by 17, and then they print it out on an eight and a half by 11. They need to have a graphic scale to hone in the fact that it's not to scale anymore. It's to a scale, it's just not a measurable scale, right? That it's that the scale has changed to it. So it's good to have both on your plan. So now I'm going to do that same process. I've already got my edge of the wall here, so I don't have to worry about that. But now I'm going to pick up this other edge of this planter wall. And again, the first pass, I'm really just pulling this down. If I had a parallel bar, I would be resting my triangle on my parallel bar. Um, I have this little thing that's like a grid, which is kind of helping me keep straight. Normally, I'd have my little rolling glide down below, but I, I think I must have taken it into work and it wasn't around it tonight when I went to look all over for it. So I'm just pulling these again, these are rough guidelines, just trying to mark where the edges of this wall. Um, I'm gonna pick up the hard elements here. So I'm gonna come over to the edge of the bench and grab that one. Again, doing these kind of in a light pencil. Your blue pencil works really well for things like this because it doesn't reproduce. Now the edge of the wall lines up with this edge of the patio where the riser drops down. So I don't need to pull that line down. I've already pulled my rocks over when we did the bridge. So we're already showing those. We assume they go straight back. They don't start getting larger. We don't have enough information. 
But now we can go and we can pull the center of these trees down. So we've got a tree right about there. Right. We've got another tree here. Again, just doing rough guidelines now, and then I'll set the heights of these. So I see a call out that tells me that this wall, this little planter wall back here is three feet high. So I've got my little grid, I'm at zero. So I can simply count up to three. And I can draw my wall in there from edge to edge. One, two, three. And we are here. So if I'm drawing this in, you know, section, I'm looking at the wall, I'm not necessarily, this is kind of inner curve, right? So it's all going to look like a wall face to me. So I'm actually going to draw this line from the outer edge of this wall. To the outer edge of this wall and it's just going to be like a solid panel of block or stone or whatever I choose to put on that. So in section you see we start using line weight still and the things that are closest to the section line tend to be a heavier line weight. That's why one of the reasons we do this this kind of section line so dark and as things fall back, they tend to be lighter in, in pen weight. We've got our wall in. Um, usually, uh, oh, they gave us the height for a bench. That was nice of them. It's 18 inches high. That's pretty typical. It's about 15 to 18 inches. Depends on if you're hitting ADA criteria or not. So I'm going to, I mean, we really have our grid. I've got my edges parked. So it would be one foot plus half a foot. We did it at 18. Right, and there's the edges of my bench. So that's my seat height. And I might drop it in. Maybe I want to make it kind of decorative. Now maybe I'll make it a very simple space in here. There you go. If I wanted to put a back on it, it would come up about as high as the wall, maybe a little bit lower. Darken that up a little bit. little bench in there. Um, I want to work on uh, the columns. I forgot to bring those down. I'm getting those in there. Yeah, I'm going to go right through the center of the columns and just mark the center line and then I can make them bigger down below. Something like that. I'm going to go a little cockeyed, but 
too bad. So I've got my overhead, my wall behind, my bench. I need to put my steps in. So back here, I can say I have four risers coming down into that space. Each riser is six inches high. So I can simply, I've got my edge of the wall, so I can simply go off of this grid and every half a foot, so each grid line is one foot, I can mark my, my step. And I'm going to go up four steps, four rises, something like that back here. Now let's see. The last things we've got to put in is the trees and the shrubs. So I didn't pull these shrubs down. I'm just going to kind of spot them in. I can see that they start about at the edge of the bench, so they're a little bit asymmetrical, right? There's a little gap right here, and then this tree falls right behind it. So this tells me on my plan, the tree is 16 feet high. So that I will actually have to measure because I don't have a grid that tall. And I'm assuming that the, maybe the, the planter drops down maybe six inches behind the, the wall. So the base of the tree probably starts there. And I'm gonna count to 16. Right. So it's kind of a, kind of a tall, skinny tree, rough it in. I'm roughing it in in pencil first. Keep this pen weight kind of light in the back because it is it is a bit far behind the this in the back of the elevation here. More detail on it. Okay. Tree in there. And so I have another one over here. I'm going to make it the same kind of species over here. This tree, the same as this one, so say it's also 16 feet high. It's sitting lower because it is down here um, by the riverbank. So I would measure again right from the ground line to 16 feet. Now this one is a little bit closer to me. So I could actually come through and maybe add, a, make it a little bit darker, a little bit more bold line weight along it if I wanted to. Some of the detail. There's a little more detail than the other one. All right, then the last, second to last little thing is some little shrubs over here. So you can see this is a, exactly why we tend to draw in layers, is it's really easy to be like, oh, I should have left that tree trunk till the end. So we'll tend to draw, you know, kind of rough it out first and then redraw it. Um, later with a layer over it and really fix some of these layering issues so I don't show a trunk right through the middle of my of my tree of my shrub column it goes through because it's in front so I don't that's okay shrubs through here Right. A 
And then it's always nice to um, put a person in your space because that's going to help people understand how big the spaces are. So this is a very human scale design. And when we draw people, we tend to draw them either five feet to their eyeball or six feet to the top of their head. So I tend to draw these little kind of cartoony bubbly guys. Double check my thing. So here's six feet right up to here. So this would be like a dad. You might just do a simple guy shape. M my students in the past hate drawing people. Um, so I've given you some entourage is what they call the like tracing with different scales. So you're welcome to, you know, kind of trace over, trace a person behind it. Professor Landis, can we do something? Can we do something like this for our people? Yeah, you can make them as stylized as you want. Yes, okay. absolutely. So, um, however, however you want to draw it. But now I can start to see how big all these spaces are. You know, in comparison, if I wanted to do like a little child, you know, maybe there's a couple kids down here. One, maybe they're like. Three feet high. Maybe the kids are down playing down by the water. Yeah, a little balloon. I have one teacher who always made us put a balloon in every <laughs> every drawing we did. So anyway, maybe they have this lovely backyard. They live in Montana and they have a creek that runs through it that doesn't flood. Anyway, so that's kind of section elevation. Um, I, you know, a lot of times I'll take time and start to um, use a real light pen weight. I can start, you know, maybe adding stone to this wall or brick, start adding a little bit of detail. I might color it, um, especially if I'm doing a rough pass on my concept design and I'm um, intending to, to show my client uh, just some of the rough you know, early kind of concept work. And this is kind of like a rustic Montana out in the Pacific Northwest or something stone. Big kind of rough, not refined cut stone like you see in Southern California. Put more stone here just to show like oh yeah i want the walls and stone it starts to give them some sense of the design um, probably i put some shrubs on my slope just kind of rough some things in here same over here okay. Oh, I've got my stone underneath the bench. Gotta have that. Yeah, I want my bench to stand out a little bit more. Trying to get lost in the stone. Probably would put some kind of color on it, you know, if I was turning it in. Oh, I've got my water line. Maybe there's, I gotta put water in my creek. Maybe there's a little fish here. There's some cattails. Probably make a thicker bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you can 
play around with it a little bit, but that's kind of the, the process of a section elevation, but you can see it starts to bring in those different skills. So you've got to be scaling, um, understand scaling pretty well, drawings, understanding plan view and what's happening in plan view and how to read the drawing, and then start to translate some of that to, to section, um, how these trees might look in the other view. Any other questions you guys have on this process? So it's probably good we're recording it. <laughs> it's usually kind of a long lab night live and we kind of pull everybody through this. So um, certainly I will export this to a video. It takes a little while to then put it on YouTube and then get it back into Canvas. But I, I'll have that up as soon as we get off. Well, I have a question. Uh, sure. Landis. So on starting point, I mean, I, I get it like to be able to just drop them down. Um, mm -hmm. But there's no, on the baseline on the wall, and I, I know you said that we basically could um, make it up as we go along. And so. Oh, you mean the, the stone? The, I mean the finish on the wall? No, the, the, the height of it. Oh, well, we have we have a high. six so six foot high, and then six foot high wall. But so, then behind it, it it doesn't give me information behind the wall. Right. So all I can see is that there's planting back here, but uh, oh, it says bank sloped up from the top of the wall. I didn't see that at the moment. So we did it right. Um, so the, I didn't see this this direction here. When I was just looking this in plan view on the cut line, I wasn't given any elevations or contours to indicate if this was a privacy wall that was just stood freestanding six feet high and the planting was low behind it, or if it was a retaining wall. But I did just see this. And this, this to me indicates this is a retaining wall, so we guessed correctly is what happened. Okay, cool. But yeah, we don't, we're not, over here, we're given bank slopes up two to yeah. one. So we could actually plot that out. And the way that we measure that is measuring over two feet and up one foot. And then we could just extend that line. So we could actually create an exact two to one slope to match the direction given here. Here, it just got a bit fuzzy of what happens when we get on the other side of that wall. And that's why I was like, okay, you can kind of have some free choice there. I take that back. Oh. You know, it's still, it still, it, it tells me this part slopes up, which makes me assume this part slows up, but it doesn't really give me, normally, if we were working with a survey, we'd have a spot elevation here and a spot elevation here. The, you know, engineering might give us elevations or me, we might have to set those if it's high-end residential and we don't have an engineer on the project. So, you know, there's, this is somebody else's design. So. I have to do some interpretation of it, drawing the section. Awesome. But I think, you know, we've, we, this is from the graphics book and we've, I kind of already filled in um, some, like this tree height was missing, but it's the same symbol. So I've said typical over here, which means every time you see this symbol, it's the same everywhere. So we've gone through this a few times to fill in the gaps, you know, so I think, I think you'll, you'll do okay with it. Okay. A good question. Ma'am, I was trying to get you to laugh earlier, but you wouldn't, you were focusing, so. Oh, I'm sorry, what were you doing? <laughs> I was messing with glasses and my scale and. Oh. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the uh, participants aren't recorded for your YouTube. If so, then. There you go. <laughs> I was goofing off. Well, that's good. Humor, humor is always good and always welcome. So yes, you know, the old lady glasses too, like when I'm, have the magnifying glasses on to see my line work, I, I lose the, the vision of the, the screen as it's projected. So, so for those of you older people, the cheap drugstore or TJ Maxx magnifying glasses are a godsend for some of this fine work where it, it gets tough to see and your eyes get really tired. So don't, don't hesitate to pick up the cheap pair of those and, and uh, make your eyes rest a little bit if you need them. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for showing up tonight. I will get this posted and um, that will be it for your kind of assignment tonight. There, 
you probably already saw the um, little people that you can trace just so you have them as a reference for future. But, but try and think about putting a person, person in your spot so that you get used to, every time you do a section, you should have a person in there. So it starts to, your brain, somebody looking at it says, oh, I understand how big that is. You know, this is actually a pretty small spot. Once you have this guy dropped in, you're like, oh, eight feet. Like, that's not a very high overhead at all. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. Good night, okay, guys. guys. Thank you. I will I can see you in communication on Thursday. <laughs> awesome. Hi, thank you.